So when a dietitian calculates the food needs for a particular patient or client, and I'm gonna use those words interchangeably, there are a few methods that they can use. Hello everyone, my name is Kim. I am a registered dietitian nutritionist. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be speaking about the nutrition therapy for hydration status. Maintaining a proper hydration status is definitely important to overall health. And the amount of water that each individual needs depends on an individual basis. It's not safe to say that everyone should drink eight cups of water on a daily basis because there are certain medical conditions as well as physiological conditions that can either increase or decrease the fluid needs. Some conditions that alter an individual's fluid needs include the use of medications such as diuretics. Um, burns, sepsis, fever, kidney conditions, and these are only naming a few. So before we continue, I did want to say that this is an overview of the MNT, the Medical Nutrition Therapy for the Hydration Status. This video assumes that you have been exposed to it before, and additionally that you are familiar with the medical terminology. I want you to take a look at the disclaimer in the description box below because this video is not meant to replace any type of education at any facilities of higher learning, nor or is it recommended for your personal needs? You would need to see a medical doctor and or a dietitian for that. So when a dietitian calculates the fluid needs for a particular patient or client, and I'm gonna use those words interchangeably, there are a few methods that they can use. The first method is one ml per kcal, and this is called the RDA method. The next method is specifically for adults age 18 to 55 and it is 35 mls per kilogram of the body weight. The next method is for adults age ranging 55 to 75 years old and instead of it being 35, it is 30 mls per kilogram body weight. And the last method is for individuals who are 75 years old and older and the fluid needs consist of 25 mls per kilogram per day so there's various methods that the dietitian can use to calculate the fluid needs now again this is not an exhaustive list of all the methods but these are a few methods which i do use on a daily basis and it's going to definitely depend on the location that the dietitian is in as well as the population that they are treating and also the disease state. So next we're going to talk about what exactly is considered a fluid. Water is not the only beverage which can contribute to hydration. There's other beverages as well, such as um, milk or anything that is liquid at room temperature, popsicles, um, gelatin, soups, these items are just a few of the many items that are considered liquid that does help with the hydration status. When a dietitian looks at the overall labs of a client um, to determine the hydration status, there is one particular lab called the osmolality, which says if the patient is adequately hydrated, underhydrated, or overhydrated. It should be noted here that an appropriate assessment made by the medical provider, the medical doctor, is really what is used to determine if there is a volume or water depletion or excess present. Also looking at the labs, uh, elevation in BUN, the blood urea nitrogen, um, is an indication as well of the hydration status. So I remember something that I learned when I was in my internship is if there is an increase in the BUN and the creatinine stays the same, it may indicate a hydration status as well as specific gravity. I know when I was speaking to my husband about making this video, he was telling me with the specific gravity, the higher it is, the drier an individual is. 
So I always think it's important for the dietetic practitioner to have an understanding of fluid restrictions because depending if a client or a patient is on a fluid restriction, in my view of things, it is the responsibility of the dietitian to educate them on how to count their fluids. So in the facility that I work, MLs equals CCs, and this is the units that we use for fluid measurement. So some common fluid measurements, 30 MLs equals one fluid ounce, which is the size of a medication cup. 120 mLs equals four ounces. 180 mLs equals six fluid ounces. And this, depending on the facility where you work, can be the size of the soup container. And finally, 240 mLs is eight fluid ounces, which is the size of a carton of milk. Other from that, this is the nutrition recommendation for individuals related to hydration status. As usual, do not be afraid to um, leave any comments, any questions in the description box below, as well as comment, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good day. Bye.